Now that the two jumper wires are made, and I made these out of, this is eight gauge, it's stranded copper. This was leftover wire from the installation actually of a 30 amp RV outlet that I did at a cousin's house. Um, this wire is sold by the foot at Home Depot, and obviously you only need two strands, eight, 10 inches, these are maybe a foot long. So even if you have to go and buy it, it's not gonna cost you a lot of money. And just like the larger wires inside the welder, uh, when I went to put the ring terminals on the ends of these things, I had too much copper, wouldn't fit in there. So I had to cut two strands of the copper out of here to get these things to slide on and crimp nice. And I didn't bother to heat shrink these because quite frankly, they went together, they went together pretty nicely. So we're gonna leave that as is. I turned the welder around so that we can look on the other side. Uh, the two holes for the wire tie for the capacitor mount are here. Hello, go through there, hi. And, uh, and right next to it. So we're, gonna, we're just gonna wire tie that capacitor in there. It's gonna be fine. What we need to do is we need to find the lead for the torch and we need to find the lead for the ground clamp and we need to bring those over here. So the lead for the ground clamp is real easy. You can just sort of follow that off the, off the wire that goes out to the ground clamp. Bring that out this side. And as it turns out, the torch lead is pretty easy to find too. It's the short one up here at the top, right? We don't have a whole lot of extra play with the torch lead, but it's gonna, it's gonna be fine. So what we need to do is we need to take the torch lead and one of the jumpers, and I'm gonna take the, the black one just because hot is the convention for black and house wiring and such things. And this is where we really need to pay attention because the capacitor has a positive and a negative terminal, and we have to get this right. We want the torch to be negative, DC electrode negative. So I'm gonna go ahead and put those two wires on the negative side of the capacitor and get the screw started in there. We'll just drive that home. Ideally, we'd be able to leave this loose so we could have some, some play in the wires while we were shoving the capacitor back in there, but unfortunately, there's no good way to get the screw tight after we do that, so. And somebody's gonna complain and say I should have a washer on there, and honestly, I don't, I don't care. <laughs> Maybe I should, but I don't, so. Likewise, here's our, here's our ground clamp, and we need the other jumper, so. I am putting one of these right side up and one of them upside down only so that the thickness kind of offsets. If you, if you stack them up like this, it, uh, you know what, it doesn't really matter. Put them in there however, however it suits you. And the ground wire is a little, a little more forgiving because you've got some extra slack. We're gonna do the same thing here. Put the screw through them, get it lined up on the terminal and the capacitor. And drive it on home. I'm gonna make sure those are good and tight. I don't want, them, don't want them coming loose someday. All right, now the fun begins. The eight gauge wire that I used for my jumpers is really, really stiff. So mostly I'm just gonna have to kind of muscle this in there I would, I would like to think that I was doing a finesse job here and, and taking care of my delicate electronics, but the reality is I'm just kind of just kind of going with the flow and, and doing what I have to do. So I'm going to take this one and just bend it over so that it can head back to the other side of the welder where our rectifier is going to be. And likewise for this bad boy, I'm trying to hang on to the terminals so that my bends are in the wire and I'm not bending the heck out of the, out of the ring terminal here, all right? So now I'm gonna slide this all the way over. I, I set this up to be um, pretty much right up against the stop for the 110 volt power cord. Um, I wanted to keep it as far away from 
the circuit board as I could. I'm going to have to go around the other side of the welder to get this wire tie started. And she comes out the front and goes back in the front. And if you don't have a wire tie gun, get one. They're handy. Okay, that's all there is to it. The capacitor is in there. It's not, you know, it's not real solid. It wiggles around a little bit, but it's not going to go anywhere. It's not going to fall out. It's not going to fall over. I'm not worried about somehow getting a short because that thing moved. And uh, this way, if I get more, bigger, better capacitors, or frankly, blow that one up, it will be dirt simple. Cut a wire tie, do some screws, and we'll be good to go. I'm going to turn this thing around again, and we're going to deal with the bridge rectifier.